Hey guys, what is up? It is me again, Nintendo Console Gamer, and today we're going to be doing another Conduit 2 in-depth weapon breakdown. Today we're doing the Hive Cannon of an unknown class category ballistic slash explosives. When I say the Hive Cannon is of an unknown class, it is really a hybrid between a few classes. Um, for example, it has the movement speed of an assault rifle, the reload speed of a pistol, and the mag size of an LMG. So, in short, it is a drudge weapon that really has no human counterpart in the real world. The damage is reminiscent of another weapon that is solely in the ballistics category, the MP5. Uh, with no upgrades, the Hive Cannon does a base damage of 9 with a headshot doing 10 damage with a 1.1x headshot multiplier and it also does uh, there is a small glitch where if you uh, shoot them off the explosive impact off a surface it will actually do zero damage if you do it far away enough uh, I think it's just a glitch though the maximum you can do however is three so there is a drastic reduction in damage when hitting off of surfaces and this will never change uh, when equipping any upgrades Either way, however, this equates to a 10 to 12 shot kill while shooting the person directly. With the improved damage upgrade or improved ballistics damage in this case, the damage will make a small jump to 10 uh, base damage on the body to 11 uh, on the head and the glitch will no longer work. Your uh, off, the, off the surface damage will be at least 1 uh, and its maximum is still 3 and that never changes as I said earlier even with explosive upgrades and so this is still about a 1.1x headshot multiplier actually exactly and it is a 10 shot kill either headshot or body shot but however if you would like to put ballistics focus on it you will see that the damage stays exactly the same so these things don't do anything separately uh, except when added in conjunction uh, everything ex is the exact same but when you put the two together and you do double damage uh, the damage will make a little jump to uh, 11 on the body or 12 to the head. Uh, same damage on off of a surface though, still 1 to 3, uh, which is very poor. And uh, still around that 1.1x headshot multiplier. Um, however, this will equate to a t uh, 9 to 10 shot kill. So it increases the damage somewhat. Although I still wouldn't recommend this because there are a lot of er other things that will suit the Hive Cannon better. This in and of itself is not that impressive of a, a damage factor. Um, however, there are some things that are uh, more impressive, which is A, the reload speed, which is, as I mentioned earlier, about the same as the Warp Pistol, which is extremely fast. and uh, it so it really does not need quickness quickness is good but it's not necessary another thing that's fairly impressive about this weapon is even though it has a ginormous magazine of 100 uh, it also boosts boasts a uh, a fairly fast movement speed for what you would consider this weapon at a uh, 90% which is the same as the scar that's what I talked about earlier the movement speed of an assault rifle and another interesting factor is that it is the fastest shooting gun in the game at a solid 850 rounds per minute actually a little bit over another thing the hive cannon can do is it does have a secondary fire where you can shoot a little thing that'll latch onto your enemy and your bullets or insects as the case is uh, will follow it this makes it uh, fairly accurate but you want to hit your enemy with it for sure and if you don't the consequences are going to be very bad because you'll have to click the uh, whatever your changing fire button is again to uh, erase it and then you can actually start shooting again at your enemy in full auto mode without the bullets straying off course. So another talking point about this gun is the accuracy. I'm not going to waste a trip to Streets Prime to show you it, but rest assured it is 
pretty bad, and considering there is no form of iron sights or any more accurate fire except for the aforementioned thing, um, you really can't improve it, and stabilizer is good, therefore. I wouldn't say it's nece necessary because of the rate of fire, uh, which makes the hip fire uh, still fairly strong. Uh, of note is that this weapon is highly sprayable due to, it, due to its high rate of fire high, uh, big magazine uh, and low accuracy. So that makes it a very good weapon to use with the Classic Controller Pro. I mean, not good as in you'll be able to do well, but good as in better than all the others. So if you're going to use the Classic Controller Pro, I recommend buying this weapon fairly early and using it or at least having a loadout with it for the entirety uh, of your career. Another somewhat interesting fact is that it does do limited damage through the Aegis device's shield. I think this weapon is very solid yet balanced, and I think HVS did a good job balancing it unlike with some other guns. Now it's time for our recommended loadout. Our build for this weapon is a mix of strategy and need. Flash grenades will surprise your enemy and give you the advantage in close quarters. Since the Hive Cannon suffers severely at long ranges, you're going to need a secondary that will complement the weapon by allowing you to have a little bit of reach, so you should look no further than the MP5. And since the nature of the Hive Cannon will make you run out of ammo very quickly, there can be no better primary upgrade than Ammo Salvage. To combat the Hive Cannon's poor accuracy, Stabilizer is a must, and so that will be in our secondary upgrade A slot. Since you need to be in close quarters to use this gun effectively, and the explosive nature of the weapon will often do damage to yourself, mending is the easy way out of your red screen after every encounter. And lastly, to supplement your Hive Cannon and MP5's damage, improved ballistics damage is a good solution. That's the loadout and the weapon. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and please leave a like and a comment. If you have any questions about the weapon, I will answer them in a separate video, and if you're wondering anything about my personal life, be sure to ask. But for now, I will see you in my next episode, which will be on the Deatomizer MK4.